Hello SAO survivors! I delayed this dead game report just to have a big, positive, nice intro and well... <laughs> I guess there are positives with Sword Online Lashy Collection reaching as high as 75% mostly positive on Steam reviews in the launch day but has been gradually declining since then and at the time of the writing it's a 64% mixed. You'll see what it is right now by the time I edit the video tomorrow. As for integral factor, it's been as average of a month as it gets despite a new floor release. And of course, Variant Showdown went into hibernation at the end of September and since the dev updates will likely be starting later in October, we got nothing really to talk about on that front this time around. So welcome SEO survivors, this is Dead Game Report for September 2023, where we'll be looking at a couple of graphs without much excitement. No, I'm, I'm, I'm serious, these are the three main graphs we'll keep looking at for the next 10 or so minutes. The joys of having a collective business education of over 10 years by now, only to look at simple graphs. But you, you know what's more exciting than a bunch of graphs? A space fantasy RPG like Honkai Star Rail. They have been a regular sponsor of the channel the past couple of months and this time the adventure is coming to my preferred platform, the PlayStation 5, with the version 1.4 update also featuring data sync across all other platforms, PC and mobile respectively, allowing you to play wherever, whenever on your preferred device. Whether you're a new player getting ready to kick off on PlayStation or a seasoned player on PC or mobile going off to tackle the new Bellowbox story, for the duration of the next month, the two new limited 5 star characters joining the space Epic are the Ice Cold Jing Liu and the character duo Topaz and Nambi. The cold and elegant Jing Liu is a legendary hero who was once the general aboard the Xianzo. When she transforms and removes her blindfold, you know it's about to get serious with this ice destruction DPS character. Make sure your enemies feel the pain when you use her to deal punishing damage with her enhanced ability, or you know, maybe the cold will be strong enough that they won't feel a thing. Looking for someone more cheerful than an icy queen? Topaz has you covered with her cute demeanor. But cute does not mean you should underestimate her. She's a fire, the hunt character with huge single target damage. She can also summon Numbi to support her to double the cuteness. With version 1.4, you'll be returning to the planet Bellabog with a brand new story featuring two new maps, Pillar of Creation and the old weapon testing ground. And a 7 day login campaign is waiting for you in the game where you can get 10 Star Rail special passes to use on pulling Jing Liu or Topaz. Download Honkai Star Rail by using the link in the description and start your adventure now. Use these codes for 50 stellar jade each to help you on your journey. Thank you very much to Honkai Star Rail for sponsoring this video and let's take that space train to get back to Earth once more and continue with the monthly Dead Game Report, September edition. As I said in the intro, the main reason I'm publishing this two weeks into October is because I wanted to wait until the last collection release and see how it kicked off on a variety of platforms and places. And since I'm technically using last collection as background footage for this video, I must mention that the game was provided to me by Bandai Namco Germany as a disclaimer, though most of what I'll mention in this specific video they're gonna be factual numbers and direct observations of fan reactions rather than a critique or praise of the game itself, so not sure how much that matters in the grand scheme of things. Either way, kick off well Lassie Collection did at the very beginning. In fact, at the end of the launch day, it was sitting at a mostly positive 75% Steam review score. The game itself is a good mix of Licorice and Hollow Realization, so it is taking a couple steps back from Licorice towards the fan favorite Hollow Realization systems and feel. The story so far feels like the best ever SAO game war story with great character portrayals easily challenging that of Hollow Realization, which had taken the cake on that front previously as well. Performance wise, miles better than Licorice thanks to the engine change, stable and mostly bug free experience, mechanics simplified here and there to accommodate newer players to have a better time, although I have some gripes on that front, you can check my uh, first impressions video for more information on that, but overall a great send off to the now 10 years old Sword Online video games continuity. And following all of those positive notions. I have to continue with a heavy heart, I have to say that it is all a great shame 
That last collection is a story that is an immediately connected sequel to a very exhausting journey with Alsatian Licorice, effectively trying to emulate that game as much as possible, thus failing to feel fresh, loosely adapting an arc that is now four years old in anime form, even more so if you're a book reader, during a period where the interest in SAO is kind of at an all-time low, with the overall SAO brand kinda doing a terrible job marketing itself in the past 2-3 years. Now, the entire situation with the overall SAO brand that is a much more in-depth topic than I can cover reasonably here in Dead Game Report, as it's something that relates to the entire SAO brand for the past half of the decade, from light novels to goddamn pachinko machines, yes, you heard me right. So, I'm saving an in-depth look for a separate State of the Sword Online style video, which will be much more business and technical stuff oriented, so if you like boring analyses, do subscribe and hit the bell icon, that's... Good job, Gamer Turk. that's how you sell a video. <laughs> I'll, I'll have that video probably within the next month, if you're interested in those kinds of deep dives. But let's go back to Lasty Collection, Lasty Collection launch. From that launch day reviews of mostly positive 75%, down to a mixed score of around mid-60s, as it started reaching more people, which is... it's understandable. I don't think something like a 65% is a terrible score by any means, I'd say it absolutely deserves above 70% with a green rating though, but I can understand 65%, especially from a mainstream audience who may just be tired with a lot of the SAO game tropes at this point, which admittedly, they are much more in line with the main series than ever before in Lashley Collection, so it's still kind of a shame that it carries over like this, and it's all why I say it kinda makes me sad, because I truly believe, despite its mistakes, Last Collection is the best SAO game to exist thus far. To give you a reference frame, let's look back at the reviews for other SAO games on Steam, shall we? Hollow Fragment sits at a massive 80% very positive rating across over 1600 reviews, which is incredible. I'd imagine this is a combination of the game being a cheap one, as well as people also being more sympathetic towards it due to actually being an old game made for the PSP or other PS Vita in the case of Hollow Fragment. And let's be real, Minecraft nostalgia will always exist, though if this was that state of SAO video I talked about earlier, I'd have additional things to say on this front. Similarly, Lost Song sits at an 80% very positive with just shy of 1600 reviews, and Lost Song in its nature is a game that accommodates the western player base anyways with its action RPG approach. Hollow Realization currently sits at a 79% mostly positive with 5500 reviews, that is a massive accomplishment however you look at it, which is probably why it still sells at <laughs> $49.99 despite being more than half a decade old. Fatal Bullet, an incredible 80%, very positive from over 14,000 reviews, and honestly, the arcadey third-person shooter with heavy action definitely yielded results for the Western audience here, and you can never rule out the OC enthusiast who will just love injecting themselves into a story, no matter how terribly the OC is handled, and I'll, and I'll tell ya, Fatal Bullet OC... It was pretty bad, with zero personality, everyone speaking for you, and trying to convince you how much like Kirito you were. But hey, it's not up to me to dispute that 80% rating. But Licorice was what started to really divide people. It was a much more slower combat, with more intricate mechanics that mostly did nothing but overwhelm mainstream players, especially when it comes to Akurian explaining their mechanics, a terrible technical display, particularly on PC, an extremely long story with a lot of portions that just tired players out from the story-driven game, which is never good when you're a story-driven game. For a lot of people, it can be the best SAO game because they had a lot more to sink their teeth into in terms of content, post-game content, but most people did not even care about any of that when they couldn't even bother to finish the very lengthy main campaign with one of the most unlikable characters the SAO games ever created. As such, Licorice settled itself to a 61% mixed review across 4700 reviews. But Licorice did more than that, and we're feeling the effects of that with Lassie Collection. 
With Last the Collection being a direct sequel rather than a fresh new world with a fresh new gameplay, Alsatian Licorice set out a very bad precedent for many people. Last the Collection at its core is just Licorice Part 2, the same way War of Underworld is Part 2 of Alicization, quite literally in fact, as Last the Collection is the War of Underworld sub-arc of Game vs. Alicization Saga. So even visually speaking, I, I imagine a lot of people just saw Last the Collection and went, ah, that's, that's just the same thing that I didn't enjoy that much again. It's really hard to convince someone into a direct sequel of this nature when the part one really burnt them out and exhausted them so much previously. And even though Last the Collection is so much better in almost all the aspects, it seems, it seems that just didn't matter much. And as such, Last Collection finds itself in a similar predicament where people came in with a cynical mindset to begin with, understandably so, and it clearly took a toll on the reviews here. Well, that is mostly the Western fanbase with the Steam reviews, the Japanese sentiment is not that far off either. Reportedly, Last Collection had a terrible launch performance there, less than one third of Alicization Liquors on PS4 and PS5, according to Game Data Library Twitter account, who's sourcing Famitsu, among other Japanese sources, tracking physical sales only. I imagine digital is faring much better this time around, you know, it's three years after Licorice so far, we now have PS5s out there with digital only versions, so physical is just losing prominence faster than ever on that front, but let's not act like the physical sales are not abysmal. And last but not least, on the topic of Last Collection still, I was gonna mention the peak concurrent player counts on Steam, so how many people were playing the game and were online on Steam at any given time, but I get the feeling there's some wonky stuff going on with older data, so not sure how reliable the Licoris launch data is in comparison to Last Collection, but if the overall numbers are still accurate, it's basically painting the same picture as the Japanese physical sales numbers, with Last Collection only having about less than a third of player interest compared to Alicization Licoris. But as a minor injection here, PC players have a lot more reason to be skeptical towards the game compared to PlayStation or Xbox players considering the Licorice launch, so that's something to keep in mind when trying to interpret this data. So, I'll wrap up the Last Collection segment by highlighting this once more. It really is a shame to me that a game that is so much better than its predecessor in almost all aspects is getting treated the same as its predecessor due to how much of a dark shadow Licorice is casting on it. I really do hope this is just an early response from the this should have been a DLC crowd and that it can at least recover to a healthy 75% over the course of time, which I believe it rightfully deserves. Now with that, I will move on to SAO Integral Factor, and I will be perfectly honest, I don't have much to say about it this time. The month of September was literally a standard, average month for Sword Online Integral Factor. In this graph that you are probably used to by now, the red line is the popularity ranking for the month of September and the blue line was the comparison the month of August. As you can see, the rank is basically roaming around the exact same place as it did the previous month and the only standout is the fact that the release of floor 83 back in late August, which was a full-sized floor, really had boosted the game in rankings, which you can see in the graph there, with August 22-23 receiving a spike and then maintaining that for a week, whereas the release of Floor 26 on September 20th, which was a mini floor featuring a sidetracked quest, did not really have an effect, so the game maintained its average state for the duration of September. And you can see exactly that in the next table we have over here, where the game ranked 371st overall throughout the month of September. Truly an average performance. <laughs> and it made approximately 57 million yen. Again, truly an average performance once more. As for the Steam side of things when it comes to Integral Factor, it seems the game is settling on an average concurrent players of around 300 in September, 
but you can expect that to lower a bit with October featuring the last collection release. I myself haven't logged in to Integral Factor since a week before last collection release for example, but that's gonna be the topic of next month's video I guess. So <laughs> that's where I'll wrap it all up for Dead Game Report featuring the month of September. But as I said, there's a clearly visible decreasing interest in the SAO series, the SAO brand, wherever you look in the past half of the decade. Light novels, anime, games, manga, other media or promotions and the like, and that's a much larger phenomenon that we'll tackle in a separate State of the Sword Online series video. Make sure to subscribe for that and hit the bell icon, that'll come sometime within the next couple weeks. And of course, Dead Game Report will return in the first week of November with more on Lashley Collection and Integral Factor, and hopefully we'll also start getting the developer updates for Variant Showdown by then. So until next time, stay cool.